You're watching the DSP Leaders Summit on Open RAN, which looks at the increasing importance of the open virtualized radio access network. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. And today's panel discussion looks at the test and integration challenges of an Open RAN ecosystem. Now, the alignment of Open RAN interoperability efforts will be necessary to help the industry accelerate the delivery of commercial solutions. The ecosystem needs to share information, reference specifications, and conduct joint testing and integration efforts. So, how is the work progressing and what challenges still lie ahead? Well, that's what we are about to find out, so let me now introduce our panelists. Joining us from Dallas, Texas is Bob Pippert, who is Vice President, Technology, Development, Wireless and Common Platforms at Reliance Geo Infocom. Also joining us from the US, from Chicago, is Johannes Tafessa, who is Technical Solutions Architect, Global Service Provider with Worldwide Technology. And from Prague in Czechia, we are joined by Petr Ledl, who is VP, Head of Network Trials and Integration Lab at Deutsche Telekom. Hello everyone, and good to see you all. Now, we're focusing today on the test and integration challenges of Open RAN. So the first question, what new variables do open interfaces introduce into the RAN product delivery cycle? Bob, perhaps I can uh, start the discussion with you. Sure, so with the disaggregated Open RAN, obviously it's a different model, different paradigm than traditional. So there are some new variables. I don't know if they're terribly new or more modifications of what operators already do. So for example, two areas I can think of, one being kind of the procurement and vendor management process, the other being the interoperability testing. Both operators already do today. Obviously within any particular operator, there are many vendors involved, right? So that's nothing to, to work with and you know, procure, manage, and work with multiple vendors uh, across the entire uh, network. It's just a little bit new paradigm for the RAN, but it's not a big shift. The same for interoperability testing. There will be more uh, integration, more interoperability testing required when you take the RAN and disaggregate it and break it into multiple, uh, potentially multi-vendor uh, elements. But operators, again, they do this today quite a bit. So, I mean, we, we inter between the interoperability of the RAN, even with today with the I would call maybe a monolithic RAN, sorry, but a single RAN vendor. Basically, we have to do interoperability integration testing with the core network, with our OSS systems, with other elements. So this just extends that down to doing the integration, doing the operability, again, multiple RAN elements. And that is where, you know, the, the ORAN alliance and the specifications, especially for the architecture and interfaces come into play to make the interoperability, that testing, seamless and achievable and, and to mature the whole ecosystem. So I don't know if there's any, from my perspective, any real terribly new um, variables, but there'll be some adjustments and some modifications to the processes that we already have in place. I would, uh, I would generally um, agree with, with Bob. Maybe one, uh, one context um, that I would like to put is that what, uh, what, what I would see is, um, is an increased role uh, or responsibility of, of service provider in the in the whole process of uh, of the delivery cycle. What I mean by that is um, that we will need to be more involved in the in the really alignment of the uh, maybe uh, different interpretation of the of the interfaces specification. We would need to be more involved in uh, in the integration and and testing testing itself and that's also that will also lead to uh, some more involvement in the in the relationship management uh, between different um, component providers thanks peter and johannes are, are you seeing um, differences in the ram product delivery cycle with open run you know i i, I agree with with bob uh, quite a bit that from the interoperability perspective um, the interrupt testing and the coordination is, is really nothing new for the service providers. Um, however, just the, the, you know, a tighter coordination of the interpretation of some of the standards is critical here, right? That's what comes to picture. Um, and for service providers and for system integrators to be engaged and, and, and drive this from early uh, product development cycles, 
And of course, uh, tighter coordination when it comes to the supply chain process is also, also critical. Great. Well, let's develop that that um, that theme of the interpretation of, of, of standards. Petra, if I could start with you, is there a danger that we could see different interpretations of the new open run specifications from operator to operator and vendor to vendor? Uh, you know, and if so, how do we prevent this? And also, does it really matter what happens away from the actual interconnect interfaces? Mm -hmm. No, I uh, I think that. Um what will need to happen and that's also uh, what we uh, what we have started also um, uh, the key service providers in the in the oran alliance for example is really to uh, create framework that allows for uh, for coordination and and sharing and um, at least on the um, on the on the regional level uh, we have already seen some good results as part of uh, the recent um, uh, events like uh, like Puckfest, um, that uh, coordinating the key uh, key requirements and focus areas we should uh, we should achieve because that's um, that goes to the benefit of managing uh, managing integration and interoperability costs. Bob, are you concerned about possible different interpretations of the, the open run specifications and standards hindering the, the, the wider commercial adoption? Um, no, actually, well, I think the key to that is having well-defined, well-thought-out specifications for these open interfaces, which is what the ORAN Alliance is, is just focused on. That's been kind of the mission from day one. So I think when you look at Take a look at what 3GPP has done in the past. Been a phenomenal job of making mobile networks work. I mean, they work globally, and that's what we're all involved in today. But there are some aspects in that that where it's left open for interpretation, especially when it comes to interfaces between various functions within the RAN stack. And that's where the you know, OLAN Alliance is working hard to kind of maybe better define those so you remove some of the, the areas for interpretation, kind of remove some of the degrees of freedom um, without wanting to stifle innovation, but to able to operate or enable interoperability uh, on a larger level. So I think that is key is for the vendors and operators together you know, working aggressively within the ORAN Alliance to make sure we get the standards and the specifications properly. I think if we do that and they're well-defined, then, then I think the interoperability piece of it from an uh, interpretation is less of an issue. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, well, let, let's say we get this right and we, and we look at the, we start looking at the integration and the, the, the complexity of multi-vendor deployments. Johannes, if I could start with you on, on this question, is it, is it still viable to test open run solutions in individual telco labs on a piece by piece basis, or do we need to adopt a more sort of centralized or regional um, open, sharing lab? You know, um, definitely the, the, the service providers can, can do a lot in terms of testing <clears throat> um, open RAN and interoperability, but we got to think about, you know, one of the drivers for a multi-vendor solution is accelerating some of this testing and bringing solutions to market faster. And if those could be driven by you know, um, organizations uh, or companies that are focused on that, like uh, system integrators, that would really accelerate the adoption of uh, Open RAN uh, and move the industry uh, faster. Um, and also when you think about the variables from the hardware and software perspective that service providers would have to deal with, in addition to making sure that um, they meet the performance requirements and focus on their customers, there's definitely value for organizations that are focused on, 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 on this testing. And I think this kind of ties back into the previous question as well of um, interpretation of standards. That's where, you know, let's say the Orion Alliance and, and TIP and system integrators play a key role because these bodies are engaged from the standard ratification through the implementation and, and validation phase of this open RAM project. So, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to uh, leave this entire responsibility uh, to the service providers. I think there is value for third parties to come in and, and add value and make sure we move forward uh, at a reasonable pace in terms of making this, uh, making Open RAN uh, serve the industry. 
Great. And Petra, is this a view you share that we should take a, a community approach here? Um, I do. And also uh, what will be um, important, and that's where also uh, service providers need to uh, uh, play the key role, is also how do we uh, assure that uh, the new and smaller component providers, because as we disaggregate, uh, we hope for more innovation and more uh, new players along with the existing players will be able to contribute and uh, and provide solutions for the for the run systems uh, that they don't need to uh, go to each and every uh, lab and repeat and repeat uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, the testing again. So I think uh, the form of uh, kind of um, sharing badging of the of the already tested and integrated solutions is a is an approach that we need to look at and implement so that we ease uh, that part of the uh, of the solution development bob is is the testing integration a real headache for service providers and and you know we do need a more um a fresh look at how we approach this, especially as Petra was saying about, you know, the need to introduce a lot more vendors into the ecosystem, especially smaller, more innovative ones. Right, right. Obviously, when you disaggregate and open the possibility of bringing in more vendors, um, it does increase the workload for operators. I mean, operators already have a pretty full workload. They're used to, as I mentioned, doing a lot of integration, whether it's from the RAN to the core to other networks. But this does expand that, that responsibility. So I think there is a place and a need actually for both a centralized RAN as, as both Petter and, and um, uh, Johannes mentioned, because there's a need to have, when you have multiple integrators, I'm sorry, multiple vendors, and you have multiple uh, interfaces coming together, then there's a lot of different combinations and permutations, if you will, of what can be tested. So I think having a centralized lab that can take a lot of that bulk of that work help the, the vendors and even the operators through that, that'll offload the vendors, uh, the operators. Operators will always have the testing. They will always do their own testing and they will need to be doing testing. But I think there's a definitely a role for both as we move into this much you know, broader multi-vendor environment. Great, and a related question, and Petra, maybe your best place to answer this one. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about what the the Open Test and Integration Center is doing? Because I know Deutsche Telekom and the Euron Alliance are, are very heavily invested in this. Right, uh, I think that it's a, it's a great effort uh, that has started along the development of, uh, of uh, Open RAN solution and uh, ORAN specification-based solution, which is um, uh, precisely to uh, help uh, in these areas that, that we have discussed. So. Um, uh, open testing and integration center is is really aiming to uh, deploy an end-to-end -end reference architecture uh, and by that um, allowing uh, really the smaller uh, or anybody developing uh, components of the solution to uh, to use that um, reference end-to-end -end, uh, architecture to uh, to come in integrate and uh, run through the uh, interoperability testing. At the same time, of course, it also um, provides uh, technical support uh, in, 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 in problems fixing, in, in finding uh, the issues. And then uh, also obviously um, providing mechanisms how uh, this uh, can be um, realized once and you don't need to go again and again to, to other labs uh, doing the same testing. But as Bob said, obviously there will be uh, always some uh, specific um, uh, requirements by individual service providers, but uh, we should have an ambition that most of the uh, tests are done in, in this type of setup. Thanks for that. And it's uh, it, it's. Um a great initiative and we, uh, we're going to be looking at this more in the months to come on Telecom TV. Um, Johannes, is it, is it even possible to harden, if you like, all the new open RAN solutions before deployment? You know, given the extent of the vendor ecosystem and the wide range of alternatives envisaged, won't there be sort of ongoing modifications and improvements to software as we go through 
operation, deployment and operation? And if so, how do we handle these and ensure continued interoperability? And that's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I think this kind of ties back to the, the term that Pedro used, which is reference architecture. Um, when, when you think about Open RAN, we, we talk about, you know, multiple hardware and software vendors and solutions coming together. But it's it's very important to to have reference architectures or um, as we like to call them, blueprints that service providers can start off of, um, right? Um, and that solution is already validated and tested. And once, it, once service providers take it to their labs or production environment, they know it will work. Uh, what that allows them to do is change some part of that architecture as they wish, but they don't have to go through the entire end-to-end -end verification. So it gives them a really good starting point. And what they're gonna be focused on is that, you know, last mile change they like to bring in or focusing on uh, plugging that solution in their production environment and making sure it plays well with their existing infrastructure. Uh, and this kind of goes back in terms of hardening the solution and making sure there's tight coordination. If uh, certain labs or service providers are doing this um, um, coordination, you know, uh, as soon as uh, some of the standards come out and this integration and in tight coupling is done, then this coordination can be, um, um, you know, better managed, right? And we're looking at life cycle management and, and, and how things work. It just makes it easier for uh, service providers. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, this is absolutely possible. And Bob kind of alluded to it earlier. This is what service providers have been doing for, for quite a long time now, right? Because it's, it's very common to find um, different RAN and, and core vendors in today's, say, 4G LTE network. And some of that, you know, lifecycle management and software coordination has been done being driven by standardized interfaces. So it's really nothing new for the service providers and for the industry. Um, it just needs a little bit more attention now because now you have a little bit more variables. Uh, however, I, I believe it, it can be done and it's critical imperative to, to get that right for the industry uh, to move forward. Thank you, Johannes. And Bob, do you want to pick up on, on, on this one? I, I, you, know, you did mention this, this earlier. Um, is it a case of you've been doing this and operators have been doing this for, for quite some time, it's just a matter of we're looking at a, a, a much larger scale now? So that may be simplifying it a little bit. It is a larger scale and it's, and it's, it's, it's a new world for all of us. Um, I, I agree with everything Johannes said. You know, it's in, in addition to that, I think it's the vendors and the operators both have responsibility for making it work, where in the past, maybe the operators can push everything on to the, the vendors, but the vendors still have to be responsible for making sure they maintain compliance with the standards as the standards evolve and grow that the vendors are maintaining compliance um, and then that the inner working interoperability is still there but that's also then where the operators and the, the centralized labs like the, the OTIC come into play to continue to make sure that nothing is broken along the way the regression if you will um, so we have multiple vendor environment and each of those vendors have their own software cycle yeah but they each will come in at a different time but we just need to make sure that you know, as long as they're all following the same standards and we have a proper process in place, almost becomes like a, a CICD process because it's all software now anyway. But that kind of approach, I think, is what will be required. Great. Petra, is that, is that the case? So we, we, we are looking at more um, well, the, the, the experience from the software developers and the cloud native side with, with CICD, et, et cetera, and we're learning from uh, these methodologies and applying them to telecoms? No, absolutely. I think, uh, generally speaking, of course, um, this aggregation and it's inevitable is bringing a certain increased complexity uh, around aspects that we spoke about uh, already. So adopting uh, really automation and, and software driven um, network functions is, is a key is a key. So automating um, uh, the, the testing is, uh, is also uh, a key enabler to succeed. Great. And Johannes? Um, you know, I, I wanted to add there, um, I think when, when we think about a multi-vendor environment, uh, and like uh, Bob say, you know, a CICD environment, um, we, we also have to focus uh, on the business side. Uh, I think that, that drives a lot of the, the decisions 
uh, and be realistic about how much responsibility and coordination could really happen between service providers and multiple vendors. Um, I, I think there is a big role in terms of creating an environment where service providers uh, you know, have um, a single hand to shake. We are disaggregating the solution. We're creating a multi-vendor environment. I think there is value for uh, third parties, uh, you know, system integrators to, to bring that together and say, here's a solution for you and I'm gonna be the interface and this is what I'm gonna be focused on, right? So we, I can do this a lot more efficiently than you can and it just makes to, to, to do that. And I think that adds a lot of value to service providers. And I think it adds value to the industry and the open run initiative because you have to go to uh, you know, mass production deployment. And, and that could be the bridge because now service providers don't have to change their organizational structures, don't have to uh, now take this additional responsibility entirely of coordinating with, with multiple vendors. I uh, just wanted to add that. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask a, a final question of you all. Um, with so many companies involved or will be involved in, in Open RAN as we continue this disaggregation, with so many new specifications and software code already in place, what challenges does this place on the ecosystem? You know, what, what support is needed for the ecosystem that we, the vendors, the operators, the SIs, what, what, what can we bring and, and how can we help the entire ecosystem here? Um, Petra, maybe I could um, ask you first. No, I think that uh, here um, we are coming back to uh, what uh, we were discussing initially and um, I don't know if, if Bob mentioned that, but I think uh, that here uh, a specification uh, is uh, what provides um, uh, the tool to um, um, bring clarity uh, uh, how the components uh, interact with each other and of course there will uh, always be as we discussed uh, a kind of space for interpretation because you have often optional parameters uh, in the in the specification that need to be aligned so uh, so it's a it's a yeah, it's a combination of a uh, good specification that the Oran Alliance um, uh, needs to continue uh, delivering. It is uh, um, ability to do uh, centralized uh, testing and integration and, and sharing, uh, sharing the workload and cost. And uh, then also uh, bringing up and adopting new capabilities um, like automation and, um, yes, automation. Thank you. And, and Bob, what, what's the rallying cry? What, what's the message for the whole industry is how we can, how, how we can get the test and the integration and get Open Run, make Open Run a real success? Yeah, so I think, you know, you know the, when we, the whole industry, and I think the way we have to move, actually, from an operator perspective anyway, is we have to move start moving to a disaggregated and an open RAN environment. Um, that's happened, disaggregation openness has happened in many other parts of the, the network, um, but RAN is maybe one of the last domains. I think that has to happen. So I think the rallying cry is we, we're kind of, we've got a good start to this journey. Let's keep going. Um, the the O-RAN Alliance, for example, has only been around for two years now. Um, before that, there was XRAM, but they've done a lot of progress in the last two years. There's still a lot more to be done. There are many interfaces um, that specifications need to be finalized, refined, but I think is on a very good track. So I think the rallying cry to me is for the industry as a whole, operators, vendors, system integrators, everybody to stay on the course, stay active in, as we are today in, in these setting these standards, defining the standards and the, the integration and test uh, processes and approaches. I think the maturity of Open RAN will come. I think this. Is, I think we're off to a good start. I think keeping to that um, is is an important part. Thank you, Bob. And as you said, uh, Johannes, um, fi final words to you. What do, what do you feel that we should do as an industry um, to help and support the test integration efforts? Yeah, you know, I, I agree with Bob that the Open RAN um, um, has come a long way in the last couple of years. Um, I, I, you know, I, I strongly believe that. Um, you, you can only do so much on the standards and in the lab. Uh, it, it is critical to, to move some of the 
the work that has been done into a, a production environment and a lot of service providers are actually doing that. I, I think what would help the overall uh, um, movement is um, coordination, right, between vendors, service providers, system integrators to uh, find a way, a win-win approach that can minimize uh, both technical and business risks in terms of moving forward. Uh, I think that can that can help, um, um, you know, take the uh, open run initiative to the next step of, of mass production. So finding a way to manage the risk and take the advantages of open RAN and go to a production environment uh, and, and, and let service providers run with it is, is I think, um, a good next step that will help with the maturity of the solution as well. Great. Well, that is all the time we have for this discussion. Thank you all very much indeed for taking part today. Much appreciated. Now, if you haven't already done so, please make sure you watch our other panel discussions as well as our series of keynote interviews with my colleague Ray Lemaitre. And don't forget to join us for our live Q&A programme, which is scheduled for 4.30pm UK time today. This is your chance to quiz our guests and panellists and to air your views on Open RAN. Send in your questions using the form here on the website. For now, though, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.